I'm sure y'all will be well aware of the trail of notes lovingly drafted by our glorious leader Ken Anderson on the club website. In stark comparison to the previous Bolt and Wanderers regime, King Ken has gone into communication overload delivering, by my maths, 49-49 notes since he kicked them off back in December. Ken's prolific note-writing prowess first began with a caring festive message that I suspect, given its timing, was crafted while watered up on piña coladas while sunning himself in the Caribbean on the back of our victory over Scunthorpe United on New Year's Eve. What undoubtedly began as a message of adulation to his devoted fellow wanderers has snowballed into something none of us could have expected and I'm pretty sure no other football club chairman in the world can rival. This month, King Ken is on track to match and maybe even beat his most prolific month of note crafting. His seemingly boundless levels of creative production saw him amass no fewer than eight yes, eight notes in January, March and April, and Monday's latest observations see him at number six for October. This copious outpouring of creativity which far betters most of our esteemed writers, I should point out is seemingly beginning to get to his head, with his latest offering seeing King Ken slowly shift from football chairman to football pundit analyst. Furthermore, the club today released a statement basically claiming that the media writing about him and the club is the reason for him ending any potential investment discussions. With that in mind, let's take a look at how the note craze began. The early days as alluded to previously, it all began with a New Year's Eve post no doubt fueled by an ebriated celebration of our vital win over Scunthorpe. One thing to note about this. Ken tells us he wasnt at the match, yet claims the support and atmosphere was the best I have seen and heard all season not only when we scored but throughout the game. Righto. This first blog has only amassed 20 views to date, but the fame of seeing his words on screen clearly got Ken's ego going as he racked up no fewer than eight notes in January. The first, just four days later, was a special column for the website, to deliver us his 12 commandments basically outlining his and Dean Holdsworth's positions at the club. Then, just two days later, Ken's program notes for the Crystal Palace game online. All this fame and adulation clearly whetted his appetite, but he waited 11 days to address us again in the aftermath of a defeat to Swindon Town to tell us how great our support is cheers made and provide a bit of tactical analysis. I'm sure I think our final pass was just not good enough on the day and you could see that while there were some tired legs out there. Generally speaking it was not one of our better performances was of huge benefit to Phil Parkinson and the boys. We also learned that King Ken is an avid reader of The Sun wonderful as he gave us a cheeky piece of trivia we are one of only four clubs among the 92 football league clubs to have a 100% rate of English scorers this season. The Eric Oseed fans, sorry. Two days later, following our FA Cup replay defeat to Crystal Palace, Kenneth crafted a morale-boosting rally note to the team, and wished Darren Pratley all the best following his injury. Now things begin to heat up. King. Ken's on a roll. Mess with him at your peril. His latest note launches a scathing attack against the supporters' trust of whom he states I did question the wisdom of their questions and comments to the EFL and what benefits they would bring to the club. Boom. Oh, but he does respect their independence. Three more notes followed before the end of the month, the first of which was a total waste of time and said nothing, the second lambasted social media sites that'll be us then for reporting inaccuracies about the club's financial situation, well, sorry and the third began although we don't like to air our dirty laundry in public then went on to air the club's dirty laundry in public by rebuking comments made on social media. A busy old January but he wasnt done there, as on the 1st of February Ken was waxing lyrical once more summarizing the club's transfer window activity. A week later, he used his note to update us on why he had to sell our best player for a pittance, then he posted his notes from the Rockdale program and finished the month with his notes from the Bristol Rovers program. In part 2 tomorrow, we'll look at how Ken ramps his note-making up to new heights as League One promotion edges closer and we hit the championship big time.